Hello, Simon. Yeah, we're here again. This is Simon Reinhold from Holtz. He's also an exceptional shot, a gentleman, writer, author, and, you know, he knows a lot about guns. So, we've got a table full of AYAs. We have. We haven't got the full selection of every model they ever made, but we are not far away. We have a good cross-section of one of the most popular gun makers post-war. It is an interesting one. They are perennially the safe choice. Yeah, they are solid all day long. They are... Agricultural is probably a little bit of a disparaging way of putting it um, because they made guns to suit all tastes and all pockets from the very, very yes. basic models which were built to be as strong as they possibly could yes. right up to the 56 side locks and, and number one deluxe which we haven't got actually it's one of the models we, we are missing here um, which are very, very refined guns, very well made and very, extremely. very good looking So and extremely popular, perennially popular in the UK market. So it's just, they, they appealed to the mass market as well as to the refined tastes of people who wanted solid, dependable guns. And since 1945, they've made 600,000 shotguns. 600,000 is an extraordinary amount of shotguns. It is. Huge volume. Extraordinary. Yeah. So, it, yeah, I mean, that is just their mass market appeal with their number three box lock non ejector, their Matador for wild fouling, their number four box lock ejector, which I have owned probably two actually now, one with a pistol grip and 30 inch barrels, which is very, very unusual and was probably a special order. You probably could have kept that one. I should have done, but it was but a little low in the comb for me and I couldn't ever really get comfortable with it. And I could have, you know, put a you know, insert into it, but actually, to be honest. But having worked in the gun trade for the majority of your life. Move on. Move on. Exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, that's just the way we do it, isn't it? You, you buy one, you shoot it a bit and you move on. Um, but the, the varying degrees of quality that we've got here, um, and calibers it just gives you an idea of just how broad the appeal of AYA is. And you're talking about two guys who began their career as apprentices to a guy called Eduardo Schilling in Barcelona. And you can see that German influence in the coral over and under, which is very reminiscent of a Merkel. So that is, uh, once they finished their apprenticeship, they went then into business together. It's often said that they got themselves a Holland & Holland uh, Royals hand detachable side lock ejector, copied it for less money and produced a reasonable copy that could then be sold into the UK market, undercutting much of the London trade. Uh, but when they started in, in the, the Basque gun making country was very reminiscent of Birmingham in that you had lots of different shops mm -hmm. in lots of different villages doing lots of different tasks. So you'd have two guys in a, in a small house, a workshop attached to a small house making locks and you know two stockers in another and they would all feed into this varied gun trade uh, that was dominated by Victor Sarasqueta at the time in the 1900s up to about the 1950s. Um, and he was gun maker to King Alfonso XIII of Spain and Spanish guns and shooting was, was very, very fashionable and still is and always has been because it come, came down from the interest shown by the king. Yeah. Um, he was uh, a better shot than he was at politics, and obviously the politics of Spain in the 20th in, century yeah. is for, for, for pretty and They came back strewn. together. They did. Um, but uh, AYA, through that time, produced various different models, um, many of which we see here, from Wild Fowlers up to Live Pigeon number 56 side lock ejectors, which is... Shall we work our way through? We could go through, yeah. Now, the, the models here, are, I'm not going to get all of them right because there's so many, so we'll just have to work our way carefully well, when, when you've made 600,000 guns, there's yeah. going to be quite a few variances. Of, exactly. But we are probably between us going to do some broad brush stroke. Yeah, I would have thought so. Assumptions. Yeah. But seeing as you had a number four with a pistol grip and 30-inch barrels, we can anything's start possible. Four. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. And they are still in business today, and I know when you yeah. order a new one, anything's possible. Exactly. So they will take any type of, of special commission. But you're, you're talking about chopper lump barrels, disc set strikers, you know, all of the best bits of the yeah. English side locks, um, but translated into a slightly more affordable yeah. And out of product. all of the Spanish gun makers, from my experience, they have some of the best quality steel as well. Yes, I think that's do. why they stuck around more than anything is they use great quality steel, they held together, they didn't break. Yeah, exactly. Um, and that mixed with relatively good copying. Yep. Very good. Yeah. So, where do you want to start? Uh, let's go cheap to expensive. Okay, cheap to expensive. We'll start with the wild fouling version. Um, this is the Matador 2 single trigger, single selective trigger. I suppose uh, it's an ugly looking trigger, but it, it will do the job. It right? will do the job, yeah. Um, this has got a ventilated rib, as you can see. 
Um, it's not necessarily the wild fowling version of this one because this is actually an ejector with a ventilated rib. So this is more of a side by side clay pigeon gun, I would guess. Yeah, it's very reminiscent of a Model 23, isn't exactly, it? Exactly, yeah. A very so, pleasant looking thing. Yeah. What sort of value are we talking about on one of those nowadays? <sighs> You're not looking at much money, to be honest with you. This is probably going to go in at no more than 150 quid. It's a bargain, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, I mean, it's got one or two setting cracks there. It's got another one that side as well, but they're not, they're not going to travel. Uh, it's pretty, it's clean inside the barrels, to be honest with you. I mean, it does need a clean, but there are no pits and marks. Um, it's just, and it's still really reasonably tight. So, yeah, that's still reasonably tight. And it's on a good the face, gun. Yeah. it's all right. Yeah, I mean, if you wanted a side by side to go and break clays with, why not? Yeah, for 150 pounds. Yeah, exactly. Plus commission, of course. Plus commission, of course, yes. So that's the Matador 2. Where do we go next? Which well, probably a step down, technically. Yeah, this is one I found in the gun room just now. It's, it's got my initials on it. <laughs> it's an AOA Yeoman SR. Sunken rib. Sunken rib. And it's the only one I've ever seen with a sunken rib, or stamped SR with a sunken rib. So there you go. It's another variation that doesn't appear in any of the catalogues or any of the books. So you get but yeoman ejectors and yeoman non-ejectors, it's worth pointing out at you this do. point. Yeah, this is a non. Having ejectors doesn't make it a number four. The key mm. difference is having a slight border engraving between the number I think three that non-ejector and a yeoman. The basic distinction, yes. Ah, oh, but that's got plenty of colour on it. It's not very flash. Again. But it's going to be very reasonable money. I would rather own that than a potentially flash gun for, with lesser build quality. Yeah, and that's, it's worth. yeah, exactly. That's not going to be more than 50 quid. It's estimate. crazy, isn't it? It's box lock non-ejector. It's crazy. Hard to give away. I mean, if we look is it more or less next to it, there's two minty versions. Yes, there are. Let's go with the absolute mint one first. Ish. So this is how they come out of the factory. Essentially. Came out of the factory. Yeah, it is still in its original box. All its colour, very tight in the action. 20 bore. 20 bore, box lock, non ejector. When you think about how much that would cost to build brand new now, yeah. if they built number three box lock non ejectors, which I don't think they do because it's probably not practical. Not these days, no. I mean, if you not. asked them, they, would do. they, they yeah. probably yeah. would. Probably. And you're talking a couple of hundred quid for an unused gun. Yeah, that's, that's a nice thing. Yeah, what did I put this one down for? Remind me. Oh, number it's just four. got a nice tiger stripe stock. That's why. Yeah, number four with a nice piece of wood, plenty of colour. Again, it's a nice piece of wood. It's got a few marks on the barrels, but those are cosmetic and can yeah. easily be and retouched. Number fours, you're going to be starting more in a sort of two to three hundred bracket, up yeah. to about six hundred form with desirable. For freaks. really, yeah, for really nice quality one, then yeah, you wouldn't get more than you wouldn't get more than six hundred for one, to be honest with you. So not necessarily a better quality stock throughout because there's no hard and fast rules there. But no. You get an ejector and you get some slight engraving. You do, and it's an attractive looking thing. Yeah. For not much money, and it'll go bang twice and throw them out. Yeah, I say I know plenty of people who have number fours and rate them highly because yeah. they are very rateable guns. Yeah. So there you go, there's the number four. And next up, we have the small ball version, of which we've got several to choose from, so but I picked this one out. They made every calibre under the sun, seemingly. Yeah. They did, yeah. And we have we have one or two four tens in here, one of which we're going to come on to, which is quite interesting. Oh, that's divine. Um, but again, this is just a standard box lock, non ejector. Mm. Num yeah. in it's, it's a very pleasant thing, isn't yeah. it? And they, they made what? I've seen uh, four tens, 28s, 20s, 16s, 16s 12s, all of them. Yeah. tens? Uh, there are 10 balls, yes, around. I've yeah. not seen an OA 8. Or no, exist. I don't think they went. I wouldn't know. I don't no, think I've Zabala's seen one territory. Either. Yeah, more, really? more yeah. like Zabala Hermanoff, yeah. So. But again, I mean, so many kids have started with one of those. Yeah, well, they're the only, up until recent years, the only affordable 410 with yeah. two barrels. Until the Turkish going to kill your child. Yeah, exactly. With, until the Turkish started dominating that market recently. And God bless them. Exactly. Someone has to do it. Next, you can go and pick up <sighs> this one, which is really interesting. This is probably I like this. this is in my top five guns of the sale, and I haven't done a separate video on it yet. Not yet. I'm building up to it. Okay. <laughs> this is an AYA. We took quite some time to work it out because this is either unique or extremely rare. It, it is a very, very unusual gun. It's a 53 410 side lock ejector with a beaver tail forend and a single selective Miller trigger. And it's quite something. It's a 410 pigeon gun. Yeah, pretty much. Wow. That in itself, with the side clips and the, the raised file rib and the beaver tail, that in itself is, it's gotta be worth a stop and a look, hasn't it?
it, there's not really many words for it because you've, I've never seen a four ten pigeon gun before. No, and I don't think you'll see another one like that. No, and, and to be fair, the engraving really isn't my taste, but it's it is on the four ten. It really does come together nicely. Yeah. No, it's a good looking thing. Um, it's just so unusual. We get slight. You can get slightly jaded in the gun room by just seeing. Holland Endless after guns Holland are the same, and, yeah. and, and obviously people watching will think, well, that, you know, I wish I'd give my right arm to be surrounded by such beautiful things all day long. Yeah. It's churlish to start, you know, chipping about it. But when you get something like that with a Monte Carlo stock as well, that just comes through the hands and you, you pull it out of the slip and you go, wow, that is just completely different. I wasn't expecting it. It kind of makes your afternoon. Uh, yeah. <laughs> It's a sort of gun that you will talk about to people and they'll go, Stop yeah, going on about it. But yeah. you don't understand, you've not held the 410 pigeon gun. No, well that's it. Yeah, and, and all of us in the gun room went, do you know what, that's so different, we really like it. It begs to be shot, that's what it is. It does, it would be a fantastic thing to use, I'm sure. Wonder. So there you go, there's a, a highly unusual one that, that happens to be Just here. Just goes to show that, like with all these things, AOA, I was saying all these things, certain gun makers are impossible to keep a track on because they take so many custom orders and yeah. these guys are one of them. Yes, exactly. Yeah, so you can't really keep up, but we can try and just approach its big brother in the 56 live pigeon gun. Yeah, now that is a spanking gun. With a raised mat rib, side clips again. A three inch chamber. Yep. Mm. It is a articulated very front gun. trigger. That a is a cracking gun. thing. And we have a, one with full colour as well next to it. Very pleasant. They are, and they're good things. Very, very strong, highly oh, usable. Yeah, in unbelievably strong. The very modern. Yeah, yeah, very. And they will be popular in, in the modern market for people who want to shoot cyber sides but don't want to put steel down their old English gun. Yeah. Even and though you can put standard steel down an old English gun, no problem. But uh, as long as the barrels. If, uh, as we can saw fall. Uh, the other week with the pigeon gun of Extreme Beauty, if you want an English version of one of these, it's going to set you back. 10 times yes, as much. Yes, exactly. Given that these are one or two thousand pounds yeah. each sort of yeah, ballpark. Yeah, 1,500 to two. Yeah, they, they represent incredible value for money. Because the quality is there as well. Yeah, it is. It's, it's yeah. not a gamble. So those are the two unusual, less usual, less common side locks, the 56s. Um, and, and I think that's probably common. because they were more expensive than yeah, they are. Than yeah. the one we're about to see next. That is the number two. That is the more common one. Uh, this one with the rose and scroll engraving, they do come with slightly heavier scroll engraving as well. They do come in all kinds of different, that's the same but slightly different. S slightly lighter engraving. Yeah. Slightly more chill. That the thing Sorry, is, we'll again, well. where they've made it for so long, yeah. and so many different patterns, yeah. and they obviously made the Countryman that's like a cheaper version, yes. it's sometimes hard to tell to exactly tell. what you've yeah. got. So that, if I can give you that one, that is the number two that most people will be familiar with, with that scroll yes, engraving. just recurring. Yeah, which is why that one scroll. slightly paused me, because it's got the rose and scroll, and I just wondered if it was a different model, but they're the same. This is the 20-ball version. That will be a very, very desirable gun as well. They are the gun to go to. They're the go-to side lock for yeah. everyone who is new to the side-by-side -side market. They come in, they look, and they go, these are a thousand pounds each, exactly. give or take. Yep. I mean, probably not in the small bores, but yep. in 12 ball you can pick up a good one for a thousand Between eight and 12 is what you're gonna pay. And you get a yeah. good solid gun that will see you all day long. That you can buy spare parts for off the shelf. They're everywhere. Yes. And you can even buy a completely knackered one and rob the parts off it for no money. Yeah, so there's, what would you say to someone looking at an AWA number two? Do consider it. We sell, we sell them hand over fist, especially when they're in good condition like these ones, um, because they have the reputation for solid reliability. You do have to slightly watch out for sometimes for the hammers burring over and the, the firing pins sometimes burring at the back as well, because they're sometimes not as hardened off as they should be, but that's easily fixable. Just be aware of it. Yes. Um, and that is every gun we sell, we recommend people get strip clean and serviced by a competent gunsmith before they use it. So, because it is an auction and we don't have time to go into four and a half thousand guns four times a year, it's just otherwise we'd never go home. So, um, yeah, do do that. And that is just one thing to watch out for when it comes to, to these. But other than that, they have a reputation for solid dependability. Yeah, and you're not going to cry half as much if you do hurt it, unlike a 150 year old beautiful English gun. Exactly that. And the final one. The final one, which is the AYA 25. 
Uh, Churchill obviously popularized the 25 inch barrel in the 30s and was a good salesman and yeah. taught that instinctive style of shooting. And this is AYA's version of it. Yes, uh, mount and pull the trigger yeah. almost simultaneously. Exactly. Which yeah. is a, a, a very doable style. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. So yeah, this is their, this is their version of it with a slightly stylized uh, foliate engraving. Uh, it's not the scroll engraving or the Rosen scroll. It's a yeah, different a style of engraving. Art deco. Yeah, it is much more art deco. And it's got the hand detachable uh, lock plate, the Holland style hand detachable. So yeah. oh, again, just bear in mind there's a 25 inch barrel and will need to be shot accordingly. Exactly. And some it is people a, don't like that. Yeah, I, can't, I really struggle with a 25 inch barrel, but that's just my style of shooting. Um, it would take me a few years to learn it, but it can be learned. Um, you just have to be aware that it requires a much more instinctive faster gun mount and, and very, very little conscious lead of any kind. So um, they are, every time I think that 25 inch are going out of fashion because we're getting taller, we start selling 25 inch barrels again. So I'm wrong when I make these predictions, almost yeah. always. Well, I mean, as we've discussed in the past, fashion is, is an interesting thing with guns. And we all go and follow the big boys and the longer barrels and heavier loads and blah, blah, blah. But we're still yeah. shooting the same 15 yard pheasants we were exactly. shooting 50 years ago. Yeah. And so these do have a place. They do have a place, yeah. And they still, you know, I have, I sold a 25 inch barrel uh, Churchill to a man who's one of the biggest clients I've ever seen. He must have nearly been seven foot tall. Um, ex soldier who said, I just like short barrels for walking down the side of a wood. Yeah. Caught pheasants breaking back. Fine, go for it. And he loved them. So yes, they do have a place. All of these things have a place and AYA can pretty much cater to your every whim. It's, a, it's one of the best shotgun brands out there, certainly, because at any point in your shooting career, you can dip in. Yes, for very, very small budget too. Yes, either the beginning, the middle, the end, for your wild fowling gun, it's a, it's a good one. And we do have an MD6 round here if you actually want to go and shoot some clays, but uh, yeah, yeah. we've done a separate video on that, so go check that out. Simon, thank you very much as ever. A pleasure, as always. <laughs>